In this video, we will be creating this really cool 3D kinetic typography effect in Fusion. This video was inspired by a tutorial made by Valerie Visuals, who makes tutorials on After Effects. So he has a ton of really cool tutorials of like motion graphic stuff in After Effects. So make sure to check out his channel as well. So I'm going to link the video for that here as well now you've already seen what we're building right here so we're gonna start with a fusion composition now in his tutorial valerie the composition or the animation takes around two seconds for every section and it has four different um, sections overall in after effects there's a little bit of a difference with the, the way that duplicates work or the timing and the way that he made it i use a little bit of a different technique i use duplicates and i use offsets for that and since we're offsetting these, that's why the duration of the fusion composition is going to be 9 seconds and 12 frames. So I'm going to press Ctrl D and I'm going to set that fusion composition on that as well. So if you want to follow along, make sure to do that as well. That way we that way you don't have to like miss frames and then you're not sure about what is going on. Right. OK, we're going to open these fusion composition. And then I'm going to add a background node. I always like to add a background node and then I make these transparent. We can press Ctrl G and open the guides if you want to, but it's not a necessary step. OK, the first thing we're going to need is a 3D text that it's called a 3D kinetic typography effect after all, right? We can use the S shape, but there's a little bit of a difference that the S text doesn't have and that the 3D one has, which is the shading option right here, where you can use one material or uncheck these. So if we go to, let's write A, I'm gonna see these on screen, first of all. And also we need to extrude these a little bit for, so that we can see this. Okay, now it's all one color or one material, but in the 3D text, you have the option to make that second or the extrusion borders, I guess you could call them, to have a different color. So in this case, we can make them just black or a little bit of a darker color. That way our extrusion has that color. And that's the first step that we need to do for our text. Now, I'm going to create an instance of our text. Actually, I'm not going to create an in instance because we need to do a little bit of a few different things. I'm going to create a copy of these. That's going to be the text too. And this text is going to be the text that has a different color in the background since we're not able to change the actual faces, right? So I'm going to connect these two with a merge node. Now I'm going to change the color of this one to something different so that we can see it already. And let's do this color right here. Now we're not seeing anything yet. And that is because both of them are stacked on top of each other now. What we're going to do next is we're going to go to the first text that we created. We're going to go to the transform section and here on the Z position, we're going to bring these a little bit forward. 0, 0, 2 is enough. And on this second one, we're actually going to reset the extrusion to be 0. And then we're also going to go to the shading. And then we don't need to have these a different color. So we can just use one material, right? That way, this one is sort of like a flat text that's on that side right there. And 0, 0, 2 or 0, 0, 0, 0.002 is close enough that we are probably not going to be able to see any difference or the actual Y that's in front of it. That's the first step done. Now, let me pause for a little bit. And I just wanted to mention that this video is possible because of the support of you guys. Now, and one of the tools that a lot of you guys get is the paper full effects. So if you need to create realistic paper full animations on your projects, make sure to check out paperfulleffects.com. And also right now there's a bundle offer that you get 200 bonus free elements with the paperful effects basically you get the hand-drawn element packs which are a collection of like over 200 hand-drawn elements that i made and as generators and transitions and stuff like that so now that's not the only tool i have i also have a lot a few other tools that are paid and i also have a bunch of free tools and assets that i created for davenger solve so you can check those out at the suave website as well now let's continue with the video the second step is to add a transform node. So we're going to press Ctrl and spacebar and add a transform node. Here on this transform node, the first thing we need to do is we need to move the pivot point so that's centered. The easiest way to do this is by going up here and set up or activate the quad view. 
That way we can go down here and I'm going to move the pivot point right here with the Y value. So that's right in the center. But before I do that, I wanted to do something different. I want to have a different font for these. So I'm going to set these up to be Montserrat. We're just going to set up both of them to have the same font. And since we're already here, I want to set these text 3D to have an expression so that it follows the other one. So we we're going to animate these text later on. So if I change the first one, then the second will change as well so that we can see the background also changes. All right, we're going to leave that at A. Okay, now that we have our font that we liked, we're going to use the pivot point and move this a little bit higher so that it's sort of centered. That's good. Now we also have to take a look at the top view of it so that we can set this up in the center again. And we're going to move, move the Z position right here. And I think we're pretty good right there. We don't have to change the X because that's already center. Okay. After you have the pivot point set, just deactivate that and we are ready to create any sort of animation that we want. In Valerie's videos, he did two seconds. So for the rotation, so we're going to, first of all, we're going to create a keyframe for the X and also the Y. Now at the frame 48, which will be the two second mark, we're going to create another keyframe, but this one has to be negative 360. And then we're going to go 24 frames backwards. So in the middle, and we're going to set this up to be maybe around minus or negative 40 something. If we take a look at these, we have that first animation. After that, we're going to go again, 48 frames plus 48. And we're going to create another key from right here. In this case, we need to animate the zero to do a complete negative 360. So we have the rotation like that. Now we're going to go backwards to 72. And here we can actually move the Y value a little bit so that we have a little bit of a different position for it. So let's take a look at the whole animation. That's all right. Now you can experiment with these as much as you want, obviously. Now let's go to the spline and we're going to select everything. And you can either press S or F. If I press F, it has that movement. If I press S, the curve is a little bit different. All right. We want this to happen twice, right? So since we're already here, what we can do is select everything, holding control. I'm going to move these a little bit ahead like that. Now hold shift and bring that first point to be on that first keyframe. That way that animation happens twice. Now, if you want, you can modify these middle animations here so that the movement is a little bit different, right? Because this is basically four different sections. In his video, Valerie does something that's pretty useful, but in the venture solve, since we are not having layers, it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, my type of workflow to just do it here in the same one. And instead of cutting the actual layer that has the, the, the different letters in this case, we're just going to animate the text right here so that the letter changes right when it reaches this frame. So that is the next step. I'm going to go to the text right here. I'm going to animate these at 48. It has to be B, right? So I'm going to go backwards one frame at that keyframe. Then we're going to do B. Now we need to do the same thing here. Let's see. Where is this? We need to do the same thing here. So we're going to create a keyframe backwards once. Make this C, and then we're going to do this once again right here. Backwards, and then we have the D. Now, this is what it looks like if I set the out point right here to be at 90. It will just start over, right? But the next step would be to add the 3D camera that we need to use. That is so that it looks a little bit different or in a way it looks better when it's mixed with the background that we have. So I'm gonna add a render first of all. 
And what Valerie does in his video is he moves or modifies the camera a little bit so that it, that it looks in that way, right? In this case, I need to have the, the viewer or the render right here. And I'm gonna say that that camera that we need right here. And I'm gonna bring this a little bit backwards and a little bit higher. That is a good amount. Let me close the media pool right now. Okay, we have that letter right here. And what Valerie does in his video is he mentions that we don't wanna have to see these black um, border that we have right here from the extrusion. So in Adventure Resolve Fusion, the easiest way to fix it that I found was that instead of messing up with the perspective and all the stuff, change this to orthographic and now we're in barely we are barely gonna be able to see that once it's mixed up or once it's flat out like that. Now in perspective it looks a little bit different. But yeah, but that is that is an optional step, I would say. Okay, now everything is pretty much ready. Now this is something that happens sometimes right here. I'm not entirely sure if there's a way to fix that. Maybe if I use a hardware render, it doesn't actually do that anymore. Maybe that's a solution. We just find found out the solution for it because it doesn't happen with it at all right now. Yeah. So if you have a graphics card or if you have studio, you can use the hardware renderer right here and it should be good to go. Okay. We have the letters pretty much ready. The letters change and everything is good. Well, I'm going to add a transform node right here after the renderer so that we can see where things are. All right, now here I'm gonna use, instead of using these transform size, I'm gonna move these like into this position, but I'm gonna go back to the transform node that we have on the 3D space and use a scale to make this a little bit smaller. Then I'm gonna set this up to the position that I want to right here maybe. And then I'm gonna use a duplicate node right here. Now you you would be you can ask me why not just doing the duplicate in the 3D space? That's a good question. I actually didn't think of that until now. So you could try experimenting with that as well. Now let's see. I think he had six on this side, so we have six copies, and we need to move this a little bit like that. Now we want this to be in the center section right here, the last one. So we're gonna have to adjust the scale a little bit more like that maybe, and I'm gonna move these a little bit closer there. And now I'm gonna adjust duplicate again. And we can make these a little bit higher probably. Now we're gonna do the same, but we're gonna add another duplicate for the vertical ones. In this case, we need five copies. And I'm bringing these down like that until it reaches that middle point probably. And let's take a look at them. Now all of them are going at the same time. But the way to make these have that cool effect is to do these. On the first duplicate, we're going to set the time offset to negative four. And then we're going to do the same on the other one. Now, if we take a look, we have that sort of diagonal animation type of movement. Now we're going to set the background color to be the same as the background or the same color as our letter. That way it's hidden when it's not showing up on screen. Like that. I use a color picker for that. Let's take a look. And we have the cool animation already. Now we can use either a mirror or two mirrors if you want. In this case, I can add a transform node right here, separate, separate it from this one. And I'm going to use this duplicate and I'm going to connect this right here. Now on this one, I'm going to set flip vertical and we are good to go. You can have a second transform node or you can add a mirror right here. And the mirror needs to be set up by default like that because it just clones that side and reflects it. And now we have that cool animation similar to what Valerie Visual created. Now you can also separate things a little bit more if you want. You can actually just separate this mirror. This is what I did initially. And I just added these like that as again, just in case, although I'm not sure it changes much, right? So it's an optional tip. You can just leave the mirror right there as the last one. And you can start from here and add more things and play around with these. 
And if you want, you can, instead of just using letters, you can use shapes, you can be creative with it and then use this on any type of cool project that you have. So that is how you can create this really cool 3D typography animation in Fusion. Now I'm gonna make these available for the Suave membership members so, I'm, so that they can download the project's file from there. So if that is something that you would find useful, make sure to go and join the membership and download it from there. That is it for this video. Make sure to give it a like and I'll see you in the next one here in Safi. Bye.